I knew I was going to be sipping a little bit, so I wrote something down for my brother, man, and his wife. <laughs> Jakey and I met about a quarter century ago. <laughs> Both sets of our biological parents split, split up by the time we reached grade school. Each of us being the first brother we had was way cool. <laughs> Luckily, each of our parents shared custody and set up the living arrangement, so when my sister Sophie and I would go to my dad's, Jake would go to his mom's. The two, of course, living together, and the saga began. <laughs> I already had a younger sibling and embraced leading as an older brother. Jake at the time was an only child, though despite that, and it really does amaze me, even as I ponder it more now than back then, is how much you were a leader. That's just the way Jake's been, the alpha homie. <laughs> Growing up, I was never the bravest kid. It was almost always Jake that would take the first steps into the woods when we were exploring our neighborhoods. It was Jake that I took mental notes from, learning when, when not, and how to fight for something that I wanted or believed in. It was Jake that unintentionally taught me how not to pay fear, how not to pay fear or security, excuse me, how not to pay fear or insecurity any mind. He had an instinctive trait to be boss. Jake just knew how. It was he that made the most serious contribution to making me the loving gangster I am today. But really though, sometimes we were too gangster for our own good. As young adolescents, we once stole exotic erotic goodies from Spencer's gift stores, such as, <laughs> such as chains and butt polish, whatever it was. <laughs> and bath and body works toilet trees that we have no intention of using. <laughs> Select mischievous actions of this variety only strengthened our stepbrotherhood. <laughs> we, we were taken to the mall security and never snitched on each other. In fact, it was my biological sibling that actually ratted us out. So much for a blood-related family. Just plain and so for, for the lucky y'all, I was definitely more of a mean older brother than I should have been. <laughs> definitely deserve to get tattletailed on and so on some real stuff. You really taught me how it's really how it really feels better to hug than to push away, and I love you for that. So I love you too. But it wasn't always pretty between Jake and I. In our later elementary school years, Jake and I got in a serious physical altercation, and although it felt to us like a battle of gladiators. I don't believe blood was drawn or a scratch was suffered. Our parents told us to look something like this. Pops. <laughs> <laughs> because we were too chicken or sissy to know how to, how to throw a good punch. Well, I'm just gonna say it was because we both loved each other too much. <laughs> it was at his father's house, a place where Sharon and Jerome always treated me as one of their own. In fact, one time around 1999-2000, Doron bought Jake and I tickets to what was, to be sure, one of the most gangster rap concerts ever. The Rough Riders Cash Money Tour. <laughs> Doron, Doron knew my mom wouldn't let me go, but he still got the tickets for us, knowing how much Jake and I were getting into hip-hop culture. And when the day of the concert arrived, I knew where Jakey got his balls from. <laughs> Jerome drove up with Jake to the front of my mom's house, ready to scoop me up and take me to Cash Money Rough Riders Tour. <laughs> I got within a few steps of my stepbrother's pop's car before my mom grabbed my ass and told Jerome to scram! <laughs> an act of prevention I might never forgive my mother for, and an act of courage I shall forever admire Jerome over so. <laughs> yep. Growing up, Jake and I shared moments of how can it be to outstand in glee. We had our first business together as Sherlock's home wannabes with DJ Mr. <laughs> DJ <laughs> Stanley for David time. Jake, of course. Oh, <laughs> and now you've branched out on your own with your own company, with the a company I know you are going to take to massive levels, my brother, man. And really, Jake was such a hip kid growing up. I gotta tell you this. As soon as I flip back to the page I was reading from. <laughs> in my mom's neighborhood, I lived right up the street from upperclassmen and fellow groomsmen, Billy Perry, 
Hey, he wasn't even friends with me until he found out I was cool with Jake. <laughs> Jake, he's just a man like that. He makes a meal before my gas station at 10 and at Sudbury Mobile. He suddenly put up with his fair share of ignorant teenage idiots with a dress Jake he has this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> An expression said with a smile and appropriately taken as a term of endearment on behalf of Jacob. Over the years, Jake and his entire family, immediate and extended, taught me how people do not have to share blood to be considered family. Even Jake's stepmother, Sharon, who could be called my step-stepmother, has always treated me like I was her stepson, which to the unfamiliar one might be interpreted as something far from a compliment. Though when considering the loving manner in which Sharon has cared for Jake, actually speaks such high volumes, she would tell us to turn it down before we heard people's ears. <laughs> now it only makes non-biological and complete logical sense if it wasn't, she would not have won his heart from the start. She is my stepsister-in-law. <laughs> or maybe my new baby sis. Just playing so for real. I know, you're my only baby sister. <laughs> yes, yo, Jakey and I became stepbrothers. Brothers and step. Brothers taking steps together in life. Brothers putting out a step for one another. Helping each other elevate simultaneously keeping each other grounded and down to earth, both when we were free to play outside and when we were grounded. <laughs> Jake, I may be a couple years older than you, but I really have looked up to you since day one, and I don't think that will ever change. Love y'all both. Congratulations to the time. <laughs>